This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. So our first story is about a yacht crashing running aground in the south of England. The Portsmouth Crown Court heard how an architect grounded his yacht onto the rocks of the Isle of Wight and seriously injured three passengers after drinking at least a bottle of wine. The crash left some guests with serious, even life-changing injuries. Ian Sullivan, who was described as an, an experienced skipper, was charged with failing to maintain a proper lookout and failing to proceed at a safe speed under the Merchant Shipping Distress Signals and Prevention of Collisions Regulations 1996. On uh, September 24, 2022, the 56-year-old father of four had taken his partner and friends on a day trip in his £200,000 uh, yacht from Avon Marina in Dorset and headed to the Isle of Wight where they had food and drink. The Isle of Wight is a small island in the south of England if you're not from the UK. Now the witnesses say that Sullivan had been steadily drinking wine throughout the day and spent the evening at a bar. He then made the decision to drive his boat home even though he later said that sailing at night was out of his comfort zone. Judging by his actions, he had no experience piloting at night as he used his searchlight, believe it or not, to light the way instead of using instruments and allowing his eyes to adjust to the dark. He also travelled much too fast at night, uh, travelling at 20 knots or 23 miles per hour, the court said. Uh, the court said he was willfully blind to the dangers of driving in his state and being obscured by the bright searchlight and clearly either not looking at his chart plotter or not knowing his position or both, he crashed his boat into the obscured shore at Totland Bay on the Isle of Wight. Now, if we look at a map here, you can see where he came from in the UK. He came from, Evan, uh, from Avon Marina in Dorset, which is on the mainland, and he headed in a south easterly direction to the Isle of Wight. Um, so he went to this small cove, uh, Colwell Bay, um, and he anchored there and then I think they went to shore, I think they ate on board or they went to shore and had a, a dinner and stuff and they went to a bar. He then, when he left, uh, he had the intention, as far as we know, he had the intention of heading back to Avon Marina, uh, which he, and he should have sailed in a northwesterly direction. However, when he left, instead of sailing in a northwesterly direction, he headed in a southwesterly direction, uh, grounding the vessel in the bay at Totland, still on the Isle of Wight. So he headed in the completely the wrong direction, obviously under the influence of alcohol, plus not used to be sailing at night, using a searchlight as well, uh, un unbelievable. The impact of the accident meant that two of his passengers needed to be airlifted to hospital, one of whom had a fractured spine. One witness who observed the yacht traveling at high speed had uh, said to, in the court that he'd referred to a friend and said, look at this bloody idiot going fast, he could hit anything. The grounding caused serious damage to the vessel and has proved impossible to salvage and remains marooned on the shore over a year later. Now, the judge in the case, uh, New Judge Newton Price, said you should have reduced your speed or stopped. Your judgment was impaired by alcohol consumption. You claimed you had four glasses of wine during the day, but you said you were not drunk. You said it was a complete accident. You must have drunk at least one bottle of wine in that period. And the passengers said they would not have got into a car with him had he been driving. The judge gave Mr. Sullivan an 18 week prison sentence for the offences. However, the judge told Sullivan his prison sentence of 18 weeks would be suspended for one year. Sullivan was also ordered to complete 150 hours of unpaid work and pay £20,000 in legal costs. And the judge also said that he may be subjected to a further compensation order if the passengers take legal action. The judge added, those injured in the incident may well have a potential claim and the quotation of damages is better assessed by civil courts if there is to be a civil action. All right, we'll move on to our next story. And this is about Royal Romance. The uh, yacht once belonging to pro-Russian Ukrainian Viktor Medvedchuk has been handed over to Armour finally, and they have approved its sale. 
Now, the press release I'm about to read from has been converted from Ukrainian, so, you know, forgive it if it's got any uh, weird sentences in it. But on Friday, February the 16th, the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine approved the sale through armour of the 92-metre yacht Royal Romance, which belongs to Viktor Medvedchuk's family and is located in Croatia, armour being the Ukrainian Asset Recovery Department of the Ukrainian government. An arrest was imposed in criminal proceedings on the property of a non-resident legal entity, Lenenia, Lenenia Holdings Limited, namely the ship, yacht, Royal Romance, and it was handed over to Armour Administration to be sold. The Ukrainian government made changes to their laws to allow an asset that had been seized overseas to be sold overseas, the first time this will ever happen in the history of Ukraine. Now, Obviously, the reason for this is because of the ongoing invasion of Ukraine by Russian forces. Clearly, it would not be safe or appropriate to sail the vessel back to Ukraine for dealing with it in, by the courts. Remembering that the only ports that Ukraine has are in the Black Sea, which is currently occupied by Russian warships. In a statement, Armour said, Armour is convinced that the funds from the sale of the yacht will significantly strengthen the state budget and defence capability of our country, and state traitors will be held legally and economically accountable. So we can expect a sale of the yacht in the coming months, and the buyer will most likely be the old owner. So the authorities should really watch out for this. Uh, it's assuming he managed to keep most of his money. He will most likely try to buy back this yacht uh, via a shell company. You know, it's all a rage right now. Uh, quite a few boats uh, this is happening with, or we believe that quite a few boats have been sold recently and they've effectively been uh, avoiding sanctions by buying back the vessel through another company which has been created for the sole purpose of buying back that yacht. We will, of course, keep you updated on this story. What I'm going to be doing in, the, in this series of vlogs is recording the journey across the Atlantic. Be sure to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash esisman. You'll find many videos not featured on YouTube, including our Atlantic vlog series and the Patreon chat series. We just put, posted a couple of videos over the weekend in the Patreon chat series. Um, yeah, there's, I think there's been three videos in the last few days. And obviously we've got behind the scenes footage from our trips to Supiat Marinas all over the world. Now, if you've got any information for us about any of these articles or any other, please be sure to get in touch. If you've got any yacht spots uh, in the email address but in the ticker, you can get us on the About page of the YouTube channel. You can get us on Instagram, on Facebook Messenger, on Twitter, and on Threema. Be sure to like this video, very important for the algorithm. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for future notifications. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye. She was stuck on this boat. She couldn't get a reference. Uh, she couldn't get another job. They, they were they were treating her very poorly, underpaying her, uh, giving her very short contracts. Um, and I said, "Look, you don't need you don't need it. I mean, obviously, ideally, it's great to have a good reference from your current employer when you're getting a job. But what you can do is 